Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this was supposed to be uh, part two of a three or four part series, but because of, uh, let's say, audio issues, camera issues, cliff issues, uh, there's a reason why there's just a table full of components in front of you right now and not a whole computer. So a little bit of a rundown. I was trying a new audio setup, which was using another app on my phone and an external mic, which is actually USB powered. It was a Pro X wireless headset. Uh, to record the video because my audio quality is honestly terrible, I know that. And so I recorded all the last video of tearing down this machine. Uh, this is the Pavilion Elite, HP Pavilion Elite M9160F. Uh, this was the Windows Vista PC, or like one of the, what I'm going to call the ultimate Windows Vista home PC rebuild. Uh, but I didn't have any audio, so those videos were scrapped. I tried doing it in post. But there's there's more issues besides lacking audio. There's frame rate issues, and it, it it just it wasn't working. So I decided to scrap it. Let's just go to part two, make part two part one. And uh, enough of the background. Let's go over what's going on. So as you can see, this is a husk of this uh, Pavilion Elite M nine one six zero F PC. The original specs of this machine were Core two quad Q sixty seven hundred. I believe this clocked at two point six six gigahertz. Uh, quad core processor released, I believe, in 07 or oh yeah, I believe 07. Uh, we have four gigs of memory. I'm guessing that was in two 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 gig sticks, or maybe four one gig sticks. Uh, the machine when I got this machine, uh, well, I'll go over that in a little bit, but it didn't come with a bunch of these components. They've been missing. Uh, one of the components that was missing was the CPU. I'll talk about it in a second. But it was supposed to come with four gigs of memory, 720 gig hard drive, an HD DVD player, another DVD burner. Uh, GeForce 8600 GT, uh, USB wireless, not a PCI card, uh, Windows Vista Home Premium 64-bit edition, and it's got like a ton of extra features like these um, like backup bays and pocket media drives, and it's got a 5-in-1 uh, card reader and a TV tuner, and like a whole bunch of crazy stuff. So this is definitely a feature-rich PC when it will release. Here's the front panel of it. You can see we have this, uh, we have all these connector port locations, which line up right here. You can see this is component video and component audio, uh, headphone and mic out, USB, firewire. So I believe this is actually an AV in. Yeah. So this is composite S video in, left, right in. So this is for recording, USB 2.0, firewire, headphone jack. We got our drive icon, indicator icon, our Wi Fi icon. We have what's called a media drive bay here. Uh, it's like a big, it looks like a, I'll show you, it's like an ex, a proprietary kind of, not a proprietary, but like a proprietary form factor, but like USB drive. Uh, you can see there's a Core 2 Quad sticker, the Windows Vista sticker, and the Powered by NVIDIA. This I, I miss these old stickers. This is a, a bit of nostalgia right here. There's also a bay for this, what's called the Pocket Media Drive. I'll show you that. And here's the HD DVD player bay and the LightScribe bay. So I already took out all the components. As you can see, they're all list, laid out right here. Here's the motherboard. Um, let's see, we have two, I mean, we have two PCI Express times one slots, PCI Express times 16 slot, PCI slot. This is socket LGA 775. Uh, originally, the machine wasn't booting and I assumed it was the power supply. Oh, and it also came with a PCI Express uh, fax card that looked like it uh, had a bad resistor on it. So I removed the PCI um, Express um, modem card and it uh, still wouldn't boot. And then I took, uh, nothing was getting hot. So I'm like, okay, that's why I thought it was a power supply. It's not getting any power. But when I took the CPU fan cooler off, there was no CPU under there. Uh, the Q6700 was gone. Also, there was no RAM installed in the system. This is just, uh, I believe, two gigs of uh, a single, uh, one gig and one gig each of DDR2 RAM, just for testing. But there was no Q6700. It was just gone. The, the seat sync had been replaced, plugged back in. Uh, so I put in a Core 2 Duo real quick, and I was able to boot it to the BIOS, so I at least know the board's working. I did chuck the power supply already. This is why we have this six, uh, Corsair CX600M power supply. This is the modular power supply. I only have these two leads for it. I believe this is just a Molex lead and a SATA lead, so this will do good for this this task, because I don't... Uh, now, let me back up. Uh, obviously it came with a dedicated video card, but I did not get that either. So in terms of components missing, we didn't have the CPU, we didn't have the video card, 
we didn't have the RAM. So the video card, I don't know what I want to put in, put in there right now. Uh, it's going to be have something that could be supported by just the 75 watts that the PCI Express slot delivers because I don't have any uh, PCI Express leads of, for the power supply. I could do a Molex adapters, but I think I will need them for all the components in this PC. So uh, some other neat features about this board is it has uh, tons of USB headers. We'll see in a little bit. These are all empowered USB headers. They're just the USB lead connections. So we have four regular uh, for these powerless headers we have a couple extra additional headers with power as well so these are just data leads that's why there's not as many pins uh, we have six SATA ports we have a floppy connector no IDE on this so this is IDE free uh, we have our one conventional PCI slot like I said audio line in uh, SPDIF out uh, firewire out I believe and um, yeah that's about it so um, for the motherboard I can show you the power supply. The CPU, I thought I had another Q6700 in my collection, but I don't. This is a Q9400, uh, I believe. Yeah, Q9400. So this is the same clock speed, but it is a newer processor. It does work on this board, but it obviously it's not going to be the original. So I have a whole bunch of those Q9400s, so I'm going to use those with focus. Okay. Here are our drives. So on top here we have a traditional SATA DVD drive. Uh, you can see this, you know, SATA connection in the back. That's the LightScribe DVD drive, and this is the uh, HD DVD drive. And I was surprised in my original video, I made the same comment. Oops, stop fo focus. That this is using a IDE connector. And this was pre-installed by HP from the factory. This is a um, obviously an IDE to save converter. So I didn't even know they made HD DVD drives in the IDE form. In fact, I didn't. I think the bus would have enough bandwidth for it. I guess it, I guess it should. Yeah, 100. Uh, I think IDE bus is about 100 megabytes. So that's what it topped out topped out at megabytes per second. So, uh, but yeah, it's using this. You know, pre-installed by HP. It adds I have a little bit of extra length to it because you need a floppy power connector as well to power this little board to then get the SATA. So those are the drives. Um, I, like I said, I toss the fax card. Here's the TV tuner card in it. In here, I don't know who makes this. Um, it doesn't have, I, I was assuming it would be made by a company, but it could be spun like by HP themselves. Uh, there's just this VIX chip in here and then a NXP semiconductor chip. And this has this proprietary front panel connector, which goes to the front panel of the case. That's where you get those extra inputs. Here are a ton of cables. Uh, I guess a ton. We have two SATA cables for the drive and the other DVD drive. Uh, we have our SPDIF cables, USB cables for the 5.1 card reader and stuff for the Wi-Fi. Here's the hard drive cage. Uh, the original hard drive has been is missing. This is a 320 gig hard drive that's installed in here. So I don't know uh, where the 720 gig drive is, but this is definitely not it. I don't even know what's on here. I haven't tested it yet. Here is the pocket. I mean, here is the HP Media Bay. What it, this is is just a looks like a regular just USB B connection and power. So I'm guessing this is just a proprietary sort of like a form factor external storage. It just has a Molex lead to I believe the uh, I'm guessing the five volt uh, line. So I'm not very good with the electricity. So power. I mean, you know, we have a Molex that. Uh, extra floppy adapter for the HD DVD drive and we have the pocket media bay which is the same thing as the other bay I just showed you it is just a smaller form factor so it's it got that same oops, if, I could sh if I could show the camera it's got that same USB connection here but just the USB connection I don't see any power lead for this so and that's most of the stuff that's going to go in here, obviously, I got to find a GPU for it, uh, and then we'll go from there. Um, I cleaned out the case already. Let's go ahead and take a look at the case. I cleaned this out. It was absolutely filthy in here. I cleaned it out. You can see the wireless antenna running around. We have a whole bunch of more connections. We have the you know USB, the the media header for the all-in-one card, the FireWire, the audio card. There are also a whole bunch of other cables in here that I need to all hook up. This is the front panel hookup. And uh, we gotta clean this fan still. It's the last thing I gotta do. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start reassembling all the components, and then we'll turn it on and see if I did everything correctly. Okay, so we got the board installed in the computer. 
power supplies in. Uh, I ended up going with the get this 24 pin cable out of the way. I ended up going with four gigs of DRAM. These are one gig sticks, uh, 800 megahertz. I'm not sure the board can run at 800 megahertz. I'll down clock to 633 or when I was it 666 megahertz or in 533 megahertz. I believe it's one of those two. It'll obviously down clock if it needs to. Uh, for the GPU, I found a 8400GS in my parts bin. It's close enough. It's not an 8600GT. I don't have anything more powerful in this kind of class. I have a GT640, but that's a little bit too new. And I have a ton of 6200s, 7200s, and 8400s. So I'm going to use this 8400GS. It's got the same outputs. It just doesn't have the SPDIF audio in cable. So I won't be using this SPDIF audio in cable. So... I uh, got the TV tuner card installed in there uh, where the fax modem was. I put in a PCI Express Times 1 Firewire card, dual port Firewire card, just as a fill the slot blank, basically. Got the fans clean. I uh, got the Q9400 installed, thermal paste, repasted, fans cleaned. I'm doing my best to cable management here. If you can't tell, well, ignore this 24-pin cable. I, got, I still have to put in the drive cage and the drives. That's going to be the next thing. But I'm trying to get all these USB cables and other expansion cables run correctly. You've got wireless antenna. We got USB going to the front. We got USB going in the back. We got a USB coming around, you know. So it's definitely a compact case and definitely a lot of connections. So what I have to do now is put in the drives and then uh, let's boot it up and see if everything works. As you can see, we got everything back in the computer. Board's in. Drive cage is in. This media bay thing's hooked up. Uh, a little bit of a bird's nest up here. Uh, we have a, a bunch of adapters. We have a Molex uh, extension lead. We have a Molex to floppy lead. We have a Molex to SATA lead. You know, Molex to SATA, lose your data. Ah, well, I'm not going to be running the system too permanently. So, looks like everything's hooked up. Uh, we're almost ready to go. I want to seal it back up, see if the thing turns on. Uh, the best, I saw, the best job I could do cable managing this, considering the space. Um, but, I mean... Uh, so many connectors like I said earlier and I mean it's just it's, this is like a fully loaded computer so let me go ahead um, just need to glue this little piece on back here and I glue this back on and I'll put the front panel back on and we'll just go over the system as you can see we got the four gigs of RAM uh, and four dims with the CPU cooler CPU fan I believe this is an IR board for remote control so there's an IR controller in there come more of the home theater PC vibe there's the 8400GS I installed. Here is the USB Wi-Fi card. There's a USB lead, and then there is a USB, uh, LED indicator that is routed to the front with the two um, antenna leads. You can see them going above the power supply right there. Get the FireWire card, the TV tuner card, all the cables hooked up. We have the two SATA cables on the top hooked up, and we have the SATA cable hooked up to the DVD drive with power, and everything else, I believe, is hooked up correctly. We have our little pocket media drive, our HD drive, our uh, light scribe drive, and our 5-in-1 card reader. So let me go ahead, let me seal up the machine. As you can see, here on the BIOS screen, after a little bit of debugging, uh, so got the system finally up and running. Uh, you see I had to take out the Core 2 Duo again, uh, ignore a little bit of thermal paste on there, I didn't really put the, I only put the heat sink on temporarily. I needed to flash the BIOS version 5.4.3 in order for the Q9400 to work because when I first turned on the system, it wouldn't get past the BIOS, which was fun. So I had to take it apart. First, I thought it was a RAM, reseated on a RAM, wasn't the RAM. Then I uh, put in the Core 2 Duo, uh, booted to a Windows Vista installation that had more toolbars on Internet Explorers than I, than I have seen in a while. It really brought back some good old nostalgia. Uh, there was... Uh, Norton complaining about uh, Trojans. Uh, there was a uh, HP program trying to install itself on every reboot. Uh, the system was slow. The system was unusable. Uh, all the device drivers were missing. I did realize that the installation of the OS was the at least the factory version. So it was either restored to the 360 gig drive, or it was um, or they made a mistake and they sent the wrong drive to the machine. But I definitely was. It had the the factory HP image on there. And the previous user had all their documents and stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and securely wipe it. I'm obviously not going to use this OS because it's, it, was, it was a disaster, needless to say. Okay, so this BIOS is pretty basic. we got our 4 gigs of RAM. It's actually running at PC2 6400 speed, which is 800 megahertz. We have our 3 drives detected. There's our 320 gig hard drive, our uh, DVD drive, and then our HD DVD drive. Uh, the clock battery was dead. I put in a fresh one, I guess, at the time. 
And this BIOS is pretty basic. We just have our Core 2 Quad Q9400. Uh, I gotta set all this stuff again. I'm gonna change this primary video adapter back to the PCI Express. It defaults to RAID mode, which is interesting. I usually would think it would be AHC high, but uh, whatever. Uh, and then all we have is in these features in the power field is just XD bit virtualization technology and restore on power failure. And then a boot field, which is very, very basic. Uh, there's not a lot of features in this BIOS, so. Well, I mean, this was definitely an odyssey. So we, like I said, we have the system up and running. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna scrub the disk. I'm gonna re, uh, at least write a, uh, I'm gonna zero out the drive at least. I don't want any of the data. I don't want any of those junk on there. Uh, just a helpful hint, if you ever get rid of a computer, make sure to wipe it first before you uh, send it to get recycled. So, or, or leave it on the curb or whatever. So, But um, that's gonna be it for this video. I do have some good news on another topic. Uh, the other topic is that I am getting a new phone, a new cell phone. I just put in an order for a Sony Xperia 1 uh, version 3 or uh, Xperia 1 Mark 3 or I don't know how they put that in, but that, that's supposed to be shipping in late August and this will replace the Galaxy S8, which I'm currently filming on. So hopefully the video quality will increase. I could, could probably get some better equipment for the channel and continue making these terrible videos. So. This is the end for part two. Part three, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the OS, update all the drivers, and try to use it in 2021. Until then, I'll catch you next time.